this is the last episode where the F1 debate show will be in double figures. Yes, guys, next week is episode 100. We finally become an old-ish channel on YouTube and obviously break out of those double digits. It's been a long road since 2016 since we started this channel and obviously did our first episode on YouTube over... Th- two years ago coming on three years ago now and it, yeah it has been a really big roller coaster. but obviously thank you for watching this episode and staying tuned uh staying tuned with us obviously through all the 99 episodes obviously it's just me today there's no john he's getting ready for next week as am i uh, and you might be thinking to yourself as i've just said that what's happening next week well obviously we'll be uh i'll be letting you know at the end of the episode but obviously stay tuned uh, because we still have a big episode ahead of us now obviously in this episode today we am going to be talking about the 2019 2021 engine and formula one aerodynamics regulation changes which obviously will shake up f1 for the better obviously 2019 is next year obviously the season that we're heading into obviously big changes especially in the aerodynamic phase um including driver weight and obviously driver regulations and team what uh, team orders and regulations things like that obviously it will shake up the uh, the pack hopefully it will bring mercedes close to rain obviously bunch everyone together and obviously give other teams a bit of a shout obviously such as racing point as well as red bull racing hopefully mclaren get up there and obviously ferrari and mercedes obviously extending their battle Obviously, 2019 is going to see uh, different changes. Obviously, 2020 will be a bit of a buffer in the second year, hopefully an improvement on that. And obviously, 2021, we will see another change in the uh, regulations. Obviously, this time aerodynamics, but also a change in the engine specifications. So, obviously, with that all put aside, I won't be just reading out facts to you. I'll be getting you. I'll be uh, giving you statements, which obviously some of the big wigs in Formula One have been coming out with. Obviously, such as Ross Braun, obviously the CEO of Formula One, Chase Carey, and obviously some of the team principals and ex-driver Jensen. But obviously that is really interesting uh, to find out. Obviously Formula 1 has been going through loads and loads and loads of changes obviously since, well basically since the start of Formula 1 obviously to make a driver more entertaining for us and obviously um, since some of the big teams have been running away with it like Ferrari, really since Ferrari did in like the early 2000s you know Formula 1 has always tried to kind of bring the the gap closer and you know create some more better racing obviously so everyone gets put together. So obviously I'll be going into detail about that, obviously really exciting, obviously 2019 is going to be a great season, not just for the cars, but see for everything, all the guys we've got in, obviously now Robert, you know, we, we talked about that <clears throat> in episode 98, obviously go and check that out if you haven't already, it's a big episode, obviously we've got a lot of comments, a lot of likes, a lot of views, obviously, and it is very, very, well, controversial as well, obviously, I mean, you know, not everyone's going to agree with us and say it's a good idea, it's a bad idea, it's, yeah, go and check it out if you haven't already, um, obviously there should be a link somewhere on the screen uh, for that, um, so the next Obviously, the, the second thing I'm going to be talking about, which is a big thing, which hopefully it'll keep you very in thought, especially if you are a Hamilton fan, uh, hashtag 44, forever blessed. Uh, and then obviously is to talk about the BBC Sports Personality of the uh, Year Awards, which obviously are run on Sunday, December 16th, which is tomorrow. Now, obviously, um, that is a big thing for Lewis Hamilton. Obviously, he has run before, he's won before. Uh, it's ho- uh, hosted by the BBC, obviously, Gary Lineker and the uh, BBC Sports team. Obviously, ran in the UK, obviously, where Lewis Hamilton hails from. It's been a big, big thing. And obviously, uh, athletes want to win that, you know, from whatever walk and whatever sport that they uh, possess. Obviously, Mo Farah, which is the uh, British um, uh, 3,000 metres and uh, marathon runner, he won it last year, obviously, for his contributions in the anniversary games and obviously all of the different things that like the marathons he's won. I believe he won, uh, he won the, uh, the um, Newcastle. Um, the Newcastle Marathon, the, the Great North Run. I'm not too sure, but obviously he won that for obviously all of his contributions. So great for that. And obviously he's got some big guys running this year, such as obviously Alistair Cook, AJ, Anthony Joshua, obviously one of my favourite athletes, and of course Lewis Hamilton. So obviously we'll be talking about Lewis Hamilton's chances in that, and and, and yeah, how, how, how can he kind of judge up to them and really you know the cherry on the cake guys is obviously it you know does lewis deserve to win it because obviously as formula one fans you might be thinking obviously as am i you know you might be thinking well yes of course he does he deserves to win it you know he um you know he's won the formula one world championship he is you know number five all of his contributions that he's done with mercedes he is a great driver he's formidable he's got no problems he's got no you know never slips up and yeah he's just a great guy to have you know in the paddock obviously you know he makes everyone laugh and and all that but obviously this is a British thing, um, even if you're not British, obviously I, that's why I want you guys to weigh in, but it is a big thing, so obviously we're going to be talking about Lewis's spotty chances, and obviously the regulations. So first off, obviously let's talk about the 2019 and 2021 regulations. Obviously let's start off with 2019, obviously some big changes obviously that are coming on in terms of driver weight, uh, the driver weight can be extended, obviously that's mainly for the drivers, obviously in terms of how they progress 
into the season obviously their uh, nutrition obviously they don't keep having to watch what they eat and obviously they can work with the car or instead of obviously getting their weight down so they can get make sure that they work with the car now obviously that was a problem for you know the bigger drives obviously in, in previous years obviously like you know I know Jensen Button wasn't a big guy but obviously I know he mentioned about the weight obviously he had Esteban Ocken obviously he's a big guy over six foot you know Michael Schumacher people like that so obviously you know that, that that's news that obviously the drivers will like but obviously the teams will like you know more of the aerodynamic rules Front wing is going to get bigger, rear wing is going to get longer, and obviously DRS is going to be um, improved. Obviously, the drag reduction system, obviously, which as you know, the air, the uh, rear wing lifts up, and obviously the airflow flows under the cars, mean that the drivers have a better chance of overtaking. Now, obviously, this has been rumoured to have around a, th- a 25 to 30 percent increase on. <coughs> On drivers overtaken, obviously, which means that if they get behind a car and obviously they're in a DRS activation zone, that they are able to basically make a lot more overtakes. Obviously, as Formula One fans, we want to see overtakes, and you know, Formula One has definitely you know made that a thing. You know, they know that we want to see that, and yeah, they have really, really capitalised on that. The DRS, obviously, uh, the rear wing as it opens is increased, obviously allowing more airflow under the car, uh, under the wing, sorry, which obviously means uh, more uh, acceleration, obviously less drag, less weight, and uh, yeah, obviously better acceleration. With the front wing, it also means that there'll be less uh, dirtier uh, turbulence, obviously, which will stop the cars from overtaking as well. Again, this is rumored to be around 15 to 25 percent of an increase from that. Now, obviously, I think with all the regulation changes, it is really great for two main components. You know, the first thing it uh, you know it creates less work for the team. You know, there's more simple aerodynamic features, obviously, especially on the front wing. You know, there's less of this, all of this. You know, these curvatures on the on the T-board and the end plate of the rear of the front wing. You know, it's a very, very simple design. That'll also create, uh, that'll also, you know, kind of uh, make the bridge smaller between other teams as they don't have to keep, you know, fighting with other teams about what they can get on their cars. Um, Main example of this, obviously, is Ferrari. Now, Ferrari have always been known to change their front wings, you know, quite a lot. You know, they're always, you know, developing on their end plates. They're always getting small changes on their on their design, obviously, especially, um, you know, since the V6 eras came in, obviously, these kind of things, like, aer- the, you know, the aerodynamics really, you know, made a difference in the Formula 1. So, obviously, they were working a lot, you know, to make sure that they had a difference in the end plates, obviously, different curvatures, different airflows, really matching the track. But obviously this time, it's going to be absolutely no change. Obviously the end plates are going to be very, very similar. The front wing obviously is going to be extended out of the car. So obviously the nose is going to be wider, creating more air to get in between obviously the front wheels and the uh, front wing. And obviously it's going to be lower down to the ground as well as wider width ways, which obviously will increase less dirty air, less turbulence, and obviously, of course, more um, more stability, more traction in the corners, obviously, which will make cornering faster, which, as you know, is, is one of the best things about Formula 1, obviously, Formula 1 cars, you know, might not be able to match a road car, well, obviously, most of them, but not like all of them, you know, in terms of speed around the track, but obviously around corners, you know, it really can take stuff like that, you know, a lot of times you see cars around corners, you know, obviously, especially first-hand, obviously, I know Jordan's the same, you know, seeing these cars, you see them take corners, um, you just think, how the hell are they sticking to the ground, how are they taking them at that speed, obviously, uh, I know that, you know, for, for what we've both done together, I know he'll agree, is the 2016 British Grand Prix at uh, Silverstone. Obviously, we were at Turn One in Abbey, and you know it was it was wet. It was obviously the safety car start wet tyres. It was really wet, and it was really treacherous conditions. And they were still, and this was even before obviously the cars became wider, and obviously they even got more traction. Uh, and obviously, you know, even that was counteracted obviously with the, the, their faster speed. But you know, the speed that those 2016 cars took that corner, you know, Turn One Abbey, you can take it flat out in the in the wet in the dry. Sorry. And obviously they took it almost flat out in the wet and obviously we saw when there was a mistake so that was really really good anyway yes obviously that was my explanation uh, again guys i'm not you know i'm not a buff in this kind of stuff i you know please go and read up on about it obviously there will be links in the description below about you know different articles that you can go and read i know that wtf1 you know have a lot of information uh, on the 2019 regulations um so obviously jumping away from the 2019 regulations which obviously as i say is very very much aerodynamic um, we are going to stay with the uh, uh, 1.6 litre V6 turbo engines, but the big change for 2021 
uh, as well as the fuel tanks obviously being extended to 108 kilograms obviously rather than 105 is the removal of the MGU H. Now obviously this is one of the most expensive um, is one of the most expensive things for the Formula One cars uh, team sorry to run. Now obviously this is going to be replaced by a much stronger MGUK system. Now uh, the best thing that I found about this and obviously the best thing that I found in recent years of Formula One is the Kurs system. You know, I absolutely love Kurs. I thought it was one of the best things. You know, you had 10 to 14 seconds and basically the driver could decide when he uses it. Now, obviously in previous years, you know, since the MG UK has been introduced, you know, drivers have had an energy recovery system or ERS. Now, the reason for the removal of the K, if that makes sense, is because this energy was obviously created from heat energy from the braking into kinetic energy, which would make the, uh, make the engine run. The reason that this was different to Kurs is because the driver couldn't deploy it on his own. But obviously now in 2021, the driver will be able to deploy it on his own, obviously with the help of the team, which means that he will be able to decide, as well as obviously all the standard, you know, things like engine maps and the power and the fuel, you know, when basically is the best to go for it. So obviously, is, you know, the team will, obviously he'll, they'll, you know, tell what maps or whatever to do, you know, to maximise a certain lap or a getaway or whatever. But the little things that a driver wants to do, for example, like a driver starting in seventh, okay, I can jump this guy in six. What do I do? Well, I do what we used to do in 2012, which obviously used to press that curse button. Um, I don't know if it'll be called curse, but it's like a curse system, and obviously, yeah, you know, 10, 10, 10, uh, I think it's about 8% brake horsepower, so it is very much the same as 2012, and that's why I absolutely love it. I think it's a really great, you know, change, and, and yeah, I think Formula 1 is definitely, you know, making a good kind of leap forward in that, in that uh, way. Obviously, as well as that, obviously, there's different uh, regulations that are changing in aerodynamics as well. Very much the same, obviously, minutely changed, obviously, a millimetre here, a millimetre there. Uh, and, obviously, the removal of some of the tyre compounds, obviously, which we'll be seeing from next year. It just goes to three. So, obviously, like, I believe that's just the soft, the medium, and, obviously, the hard. Very, very simple. Obviously, none of this hyper softs, uh, ultra softs, unbelievably soft, soft. I can't believe it's not soft, soft. The, it's a magnet soft. It's a... And it's a it, it, it's a it's a Mac for Tappen cap soft you, you know all this crap soft it's it, you know it's just going to get the same just going to get normal and just going to get you know back to normal in the normal three compounds from Pirelli that we have obviously seen speaking of Pirelli obviously they have extended their contract uh, for the next few years in Formula One so obviously we'll be seeing them past 2021 uh, and obviously hopefully into the future it's been rumored to be around 2025 but obviously we will see uh, how that uh, stands now obviously as I said at the start obviously we're going to be talking about some of the things that the uh, the team principals and obviously the big wigs in Formula One have been saying about the changes now obviously um, Chase Carey obviously he backs the engine changes a lot obviously it's been designed by a lot of by the FOM obviously a lot of the aerodynamic uh, engineering team obviously that work with Formula 1 obviously to benefit the team and obviously also to benefit Formula 1 management but the best one I think it became from was Ross Braun now obviously he you know ran Mercedes he ran Ferrari he knows you know the ins and outs of Formula 1 and obviously how basically a team you know works and yeah, how, how they can really capitalise on. Obviously, he basically says that Formula One will be the best it's ever seen, the best race it's ever seen in 2021. He says that there's going to be about a 20% increase in basically form the Formula One progression from this year. And obviously, I think that's absolutely fantastic. I think you know what a great change it's going to make, and it's going to really you know push the boundaries of what one Formula One can do, and also hopefully you know close the gap you know between some of the big teams. Now, obviously, you know Formula One is always going to be a you know one team takes it all. But hopefully we can see some, you know, some some more battling uh, next year. Obviously between maybe Mercedes, well, most likely Mercedes, Ferrari, Red Bull, maybe Renault will be in there. Obviously with the new addition of obviously with Danny Rick, and and yes, obviously maybe some other teams like McLaren. Obviously they've got some new drivers in there. Maybe Williams, um, and obviously one of my probably my favourite team next year, the one that I'm not supporting, but I'm they are definitely. One of my favourite teams next year, I can't wait to see them, is obviously Racing Point of Force India, if you haven't got used to the name change. And I'm really, really excited to see what they can do. I think they're going to have an amazing addition. Obviously, Lance Stroll, you know, we all knew he was going there. I think he's, you know, he's still going to make a good impression on the team. I think, you know, really great work from there. And obviously, yeah, from this year, I think they've done a really, really good job, especially, obviously, after all their problems that they had in uh, Spa or Spa time. Obviously, as you remember, when they were deducted points and excluded from the uh, from the 2018 Constructors' Championship, at that time, 2018, after Spa, sorry, they built back their points and they were back in contention. They finished something like fifth place. It really absolutely was incredible for them. So, obviously, they're a team I'm excited to see. 
and yeah, it's it's going to make it absolutely amazing to, uh, driving to see. I can't wait for 2019, and I really can't wait for 2021. But obviously, we can't rush all those things, and you know, we just got to enjoy Formula One as we do. Obviously, so all through uh, winter testing and all that, you know, we're just going to enjoy the 2019 season. Onto some other news now. Obviously, as the second part of this episode, as I was saying, is obviously talking about Lewis Hamilton. Now, obviously. Big night in the world of uh, sport, especially here in the UK, is obviously the BBC Sports Personality Awards show, uh, which obviously is in Birmingham on Sunday the 16th of this month, which I believe is tomorrow. And obviously, you know, very big, uh, you know, they've had some amazing winners in the past, obviously, uh, some really great guys. I think one of my favourites was Chris Hoy. So Chris Hoy, obviously legendary, um, you know, Scottish and obviously great British uh, track cyclists. He really, you know, kind of shook the world of cycling. He really basically uh, brought cycling to uh, the UK. And obviously I, brought, I was brought up in a, you know, a very cycling heavy household. I've still a lot of cycling, so it was, really was fantastic for me. Obviously other winners, you know, some really great guys. Obviously Mark Cavendish has won it. Jensen Button, obviously Lewis Hamilton, as I mentioned. And obviously since then we've seen some big uh, uh, people, especially from the Olympics, obviously such as Mo Farah. Uh, win it now obviously this year um there hasn't really been much uh, listed about the contenders now they're going to basically be throwing a curveball into everyone you know everyone that's watching and instead of releasing the um instead of releasing the contenders you know a few weeks beforehand which you know they normally do you know so you can kind of you know you can get voting and you can get you know thinking about that and putting bets on it the booty things like that you know they are going to be waiting until that night obviously make it you know more fresh for the people that are watching uh, make it more fresh for you know everything yeah the voting and everything like that i do hope that they have told uh, the athletes in advance and i hope they just don't expect them to turn up because obviously lewis hamilton might be on holiday in miami or somewhere or you know australia he just has to go there straight away it's like i don't think so but um but yeah i hope they told them in advance but obviously there is some big rumors obviously lewis hamilton is almost confirmed you know you have to obviously alongside big guys like alistair Cook, geraint thomas obviously the winner of the tour de france obviously from uh uh, Wales and obviously AJ Anthony Joshua obviously for his big obviously fourth title this year obviously just almost destroying the world literally in the world of boxing now obviously Lewis Hamilton is obviously the guy who's going to be at the top of everyone's list every Formula 1 fan's list many people from the UK's list obviously uh, even if you're not a Formula 1 fan I think you'll still know and appreciate you know what Lewis Hamilton has done so you know what we're going to be talking about what I'm going to mention today is you know does Lewis Hamilton deserve it from our point of view and you know does will the uk population and obviously everyone else because i believe that everyone else still can vote maybe if even if you're not from the uk would you still want to see lewis hamilton win the trophy and even if you can't vote um you know would you like to see lewis hamilton you know become the 2018 spotty winner um many people like it's uh, who win that award or you know normally get like mbes cbes and might even get knighted so you never even know would you like to see a sir lewis hamilton uh, in uh, the end of 2019 obviously when the queen uh, when uh, the queen you know gives her uh, when basically obviously on new year's day she gives her a uh, new year's eve so she gives her commendations obviously who is knighted and many times it's sports people like for example obviously as we saw sir more uh, it's obviously lewis hamilton you know as you know i don't need to tell you anymore you know five world championships don't need to tell you what he's done obviously he's rocked it with mercedes now does he deserve to win the sports personality of the year award now, obviously, as I've just said, you know, I'm a big Anthony Joshua fan. Obviously, I'm a big Gary Thomas fan. Um, you know, there'll be other people running as well that, you know, probably can't put our finger on. Possibly Tony Bellew, obviously, from uh, Liverpool, um, other names. Oh, and obviously, um, you know, maybe some of the uh, squad from the England game. I believe Harry Kane might be running, obviously, the England captain. Obviously, maybe John Pickford and people like that. If you were going to ask me, obviously, I'd probably put John Pickford in there. Obviously, a lot of lad from see, where me and Jordan, we both grew up. Obviously, we didn't know him. Well, that would be good. But, uh, obviously, we grew up around where he was from. So, obviously, that's quite nice. You know, to say that we kind of know somebody or we know of somebody. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, do we think Lewis Hamilton will win? Now, obviously, my personal opinion, I'd like to think he would, like, he would win this year. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because, you know, I'm not a Lewis Hamilton fan, if that makes sense, like a fanboy. But, uh, you know, I've kind of developed this love for Lewis this year. Now, obviously, I've been at Belgium, I've been to Italy, I've been to Singapore, and obviously I've seen Lewis Hamilton kind of, you know, take this car. This, I mean, he is an amazing car, you know, he has been given, you know, a lot of tools, but, you know, if you go to work and you're just given all this equipment to use, this, you know, lovely, you know, like, you know, million dollar equipment, 
it's up to you to use it at the end of the day. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that Lewis, you know, could completely bomb that car, but he could, and he doesn't, and he drives it superbly. And really, I had I found this kind of this look, this this more it's more of a respect for Lewis Hamilton this year, obviously, than I've had uh, in previous years. So obviously, this year, I would like to say that he would win it. Now, obviously, it will be very very tight. Obviously, it depends on the British voting. Uh, that's why do I think you know the UK would want Lewis to win? I think that's a very hard question to say. Obviously, um, you know the big thing that we've done this year. Obviously, we have won the. Uh, sorry, I'd like to say we won. That's why I said we won. I'd like to think that we had. Uh, we um, came. Where did we come? We came second. No, we didn't. We came fourth. Uh, we came fourth. That's right, fourth in the 2018 uh, World Cup. Um, in Russia, now obviously that was a great game against Croatia. We basically took everything that everyone thought about, you know, England football club, and just kind of just blew it, up, uh, you know, just shoved it in their faces, and it blew it out and, and out of proportion. It really, really was. You know, we people didn't even think we would get out of the last sixteen or the of the group stages, possibly the last sixteen. I think that's where I thought they would end up. And then yeah, they went through the quarterfinals and ended up obviously fourth place to play Belgium in the third place. Obviously lost that game, but a fourth place on penalties as well was yeah absolutely incredible so you know if maybe if like Harry Kane runs or maybe if some of the England squad run you know possibly might be there it will be hard obviously especially Anthony Joshua obviously I know that he's going to have a lot of fans as well I don't know about anyone else but obviously anyone else that might you know be in contention obviously if you think of anyone let me know in the comment section below if you've heard anything let me know down below obviously as I say you know it's been kept very very secret obviously until um, you know that night obviously I let everyone know you know who was at the the NES stadium in Bur in, in Birmingham so obviously um, you know but but the, the rumours that are out obviously which is Lewis Hamilton you know do I think that he'll win I think that he will give it a good chance and I'm really excited to see uh, what he will do I think if he could get especially if he could get if he could get in the top three fantastic for him but if he won it I think I'd be very happy I think I'd be happy this year I think I'd be very very happy in my predictions if anyone asked is obviously Lewis Hamlin first AJ second and obviously Garen Thomas in third place okay now now guys now the last news to give out is obviously the news that we are all very very excited for so the F1 debate show if you remember if you were with us in 2016 obviously you would remember us doing an F1 debate show um 12 days of Christmas now obviously it's a bit too late to do that you know we are what the 15th uh, or something around that. Obviously, in Christmas time, you know, it's too busy to do the Critter 12 Days. But if you remember, on Christmas Day, we did a bit of an award show. Now, obviously, that was good. It was in a bit of a beta run at that time. So, obviously, um, you know, that was good to go off. And we were hoping to bring something like that back uh, again. Now, without further ado, obviously, I would like to mention... Drummer, please. Thank you. Um, I would like to mention the F1 debate show episode 100, which is the F, which is the F1 debate show's 2018 Formula One awards. Now, obviously, um, thank you. And obviously, we will be talking about you know all the awards from the world of Formula One. Obviously, ranking all the teams, um, you know, giving out awards, you know, rookie of the year, driver of the year, team of the year, alongside other awards, you know, a bit of quirky awards, things like that. You know that we, me and Jordan, obviously have both kind of voted in. We'll also be mentioning some of the things that you guys have been voting in. Obviously, Obviously via our Facebook page. Obviously, thanks for voting. And obviously, if, you ha if you're not with us on Facebook, obviously make sure you are. You can still vote with some of our polls that we still have in on Facebook. Obviously, so we'll mention some of those. Some of those. And yeah, it's just going to be a good night. So obviously, you know, it, I hope you can join us for that. Now you might be asking yourself, when is that, uh, Lyle? When is that? Now I can tell you guys that um, it is going to be released at 6 p.m. GMT on. Mon on Monday, December the 24th. Now, is, yes, Monday the 24th, which is Christmas Eve. Now, obviously, this episode is going to be released, and hopefully you can get to watch it before Christmas Day, obviously, to celebrate, uh, to launch yourself into Christmas season with the F1 debate show. And obviously, that's the last uh, That's the last piece of news to give, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you guys on Christmas Eve.